Good morning everyone. A warm welcome to our digital Sunday service for those of you who are watching digitally this morning. I know it's been quite a while since many people have been able to get out and to see familiar faces and be back at church. So just like I say, a special welcome this morning to Gwen Dixon and to Brian and Sheila who are in Abigail and also Beryl Jones who used to sit on the right hand side. We hope you are well this morning. We're into a, a new season, finally, so to speak. Summer has finally arrived. Praise God, it seems like a, it's been a long winter. We've just been to Anglesey for a couple of days with the boys and enjoyed some amazing, beautiful weather and some nice beaches. It seems to be a long winter, as I said. It's been a long pandemic, hasn't it? It seems to be dragging on, but there's, the vaccine seems to be working and the infections are being going down. So let's continue to pray and, and to see uh, as we turn back to normal. But what is the new normal? What's the new season that God is calling us to do? How do we need to trust in God more and to walk faithfully before him? This morning we're starting a new series. Hugh Williams is introducing the book that Paul wrote, the letter to the Colossians. So look out for that later in the service. We've also got an interview from, from Mo in the service and Joe and Sarah are doing a, a children's sketch. Big thank you also to Geffen for the prayers. Uh, Lisa. I'm going to read from Psalm 103. I don't know about you but sometimes when I read scripture it kind of goes over the top of my head and I don't allow it to sink in as it should and sometimes we need to meditate on scripture don't we to allow the words to sink into our hearts. So maybe this is one that we can read this week and allow God to speak to us. Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my innermost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. 
as a father has compassion on his children. So the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower in the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Is it me now? Oh. I think it is. I think we're actually going to read the whole song. Shall we, shall we open our service in prayer before we go to, to worship now? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you're a God of love and thank you that we can't measure your love. Thank you that it's as high as the heavens are above the earth. And thank you, Lord, that as that psalm says, as far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our sins and trespasses from us. Lord, thank you that you're a God who completely wipes the slate clean. Thank you that you're a God who loves us unconditionally lord and thank you that when you call us to follow you it's from everlasting to everlasting so lord as we enter into worship now each of, it, each of us in our homes help us to respond to that psalm to praise the lord with all that we have in our hearts with our voices and lord we pray that you'd meet with each of us meet with us and encourage us strengthen us inwardly by your holy spirit for we pray in jesus name amen amen Enjoy the service, everybody. Stay safe. God bless. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing
Your love. 
Good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you this morning. We have Maureen Corns in the hot seat this morning, but if you've been to Kimmel Bay Church, we all know her as Mo. Um, Mo was sharing something recently uh, before the pastoral care meeting one Tuesday, and I thought it'd be great to interview her. Uh, officially, Mo is part of the pastoral care team at KBC. Um, unofficially, she's not part of the welcome team, but if you've been to Kimmel Bay, you'll, you'd have had a, a welcome by Mo at some place in the building because she's always um, welcoming people with a smile as they come in. So, um, Mo, a, f- a few weeks ago, you were telling us about you'd, you'd prayed. Would you like to share what you shared with us last time, please? Yeah, certainly. Um, the thing is that I'm probably like a lot of people. Um, I'm very much in the background. I don't like to be in the front because I feel strange. It's not my scene. Mm. And all the pandemic has been a bit strange because it's been good and been bad. I've had good days and bad days like us all. But the one thing that seems to have come through this last one is that I'm not quite sure what I'm here for. I don't. I didn't quite get what I'm here for, what my place was or in the church and I got to the stage finally that I actually asked a question I do pray I pray most nights and most mornings but I've always been vague and I usually about other people but for me this is the first time I've ever actually asked a question and I said to him I said please could you give me a sign as to what I'm supposed to be doing in my life or in my church, whatever. I said, I do need a sign. Now, that is the first time I've ever actually asked a question at rise. And the weirdest thing of all is the day after I read the Bible, so as I have it, what is it, the Daily Bread or whatever it's called, the book, and I read passages each morning. And I could not believe that the passage I read was in Romans, and it was Romans 12, and it was 3 to 7. And I cannot believe the words, because it was going on saying things like, um, Christ is a body of everybody. Everybody's part of a, of a team, everybody. And I thought, oh, that's okay. And then it went on to say that if you're a preacher, you'd be preaching good, etc. And I thought, oh, well, I'm not a preacher. I certainly won't pray in public because, goodness me, what the earth is understand me, I have no idea. <laughs> so, but going down the list and right at the end, right at the very end of this passage said, if be kindness, do it well. And I said to myself, I can be kind. Mm. That I can do. And I said, that'll do me? Fine. I knew that from that moment, that's what I can do. I can be kind. It's a very small thing, but it's something I could do. And it just made me feel so different. I can't tell you what it made me feel like. And since then, I've just accepted the fact that I am just me. Can't be anybody else. But what I can do, I can be kind. Mm -hmm. And that is sufficient. I believe in God and angels so much, 100%. And God, I think, I know he's there and I believe in him totally. But I just don't feel worthy of him personally. And this is where I found it was quite strange that I actually got an answer. Mm-hmm. So to everybody out there, whoever you may be, just ask the question. Just ask the question and you'll get the answer in some point, some way. It may not be straight away like I did. It's quite strange. Um, there's no bells or flying things or nothing wonderful. It was just this feeling of finally I knew what I could do for people generally be kind yeah. and really that's it brilliant it's it's great to hear that um god answers answers prayers and he speaks to us isn't it and he really yeah. he met you where your needs were that you were feeling low and needed encouragement and god god answered and it, it it's funny because when you told told us in church i was a bit sh- in on, on, the, on the meeting i was a bit shocked because you know, we, we see you as somebody walking around bringing encouragement and bringing love and, and kindness and, and and blessing people. But sometimes the enemy sort of, he brings us down, doesn't he? He says, you're not mm. good for this and you're not good for that. But actually, he, he, he tries to knock our gift. But actually, you know, you are really gifted and you bring a lot of encouragement to people. Um, so fa- thanks for sharing that, Mo. Um, during the lockdown as well, obviously, we've been stuck in our homes. Have you had a... Um, is that had an effect on your confidence? 
Um, I think it has really. Uh, some time ago, I did stuff from anxiety. Various things happened in my life, which is fine. They, they've gone. Um, and uh, it's a new life for me. But um, this last lockdown has been quite difficult because I think it's been the winter months. I think it's been dark. It's been dismal. Whereas the first one, it was summer, so I could be in the garden. I could just potter around or whatever. This I found difficult. And I think this is why suddenly you have days where you just think of things and you shouldn't think of things, but you do. And this is where I think confidence came as I didn't think I was good enough or whatever the word was. And I needed some, I don't know, I needed somebody to say something. And when I spoke to you about it, um, I wasn't going to because that's not me, is it? So, but I said it. And when I got the encouragement from you all, it just was lovely. It just made it finally, I felt good. Yeah, and confidence is there, but it's a bit stodgy still. You know, it's um, it'll be there, it'll come back. But uh, um, I do go out and about, but I've not been lots of people yet. You know, it, it's really really weird, but I do like people. This is a strange thing. I love it. I love going to church and I love meeting people like that. I just loved it, but I've not done that for so long. I think that's what's happened. I think I've just lost. Yeah. Whatever it is I have. <laughs> it's yeah. back. It's back. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> We've all suffered a, a, a lack of confidence around a lot of people. I don't like going to places where they're really busy. Um, there's a lot of weird people out there. But um, when, there's, when it's too busy and people are too close because of, you know, we all know it's a virus that spreads in close proximity. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it does cause anxiety when you're around a lot of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of people might not know this, but... Um, because most part of the pastoral care team, she sends out a lot of cards and um, flowers and encouragement. So um, many people get cards from, from the church and a lot of those are written by Mo. So um, even though we're not in the building, Mo's still able to send out encouragement. And lots of people say, wow, that's amazing because that's exactly what I've needed at this time. So thank you, Mo, for sharing your gifts with the church. Can we can we pray for you before, before we... Um, yeah, because you can. Yeah. Yeah, Heavenly Father, thank you that you're a God who speaks. Thank you that you're a God who loves. And thank you that you're a God who um, calls us to find our identity in you as a child of the living God. And thank you that you've equipped Mo with a gift of encouragement and kindness. And thank you that we've seen that over many years in the church at KBC. And um, during the pandemic, thank you that she continues to share those gifts by sending out all the cards. And thank you the, for the answer to her prayer that you answered directly and brought encouragement to her heart and um, a renewed confidence to her to, to continue to serve you, to follow you and to love you. So thank you for Mo. We pray that you continue to equip her and for the church as a whole, Lord, continue to empower each of us to be built up in love, compassion, mercy and grace for each other and to serve you with all of our hearts, whatever our gifts are, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mo. Great to see you this morning. Yeah. And we'll see you all soon in church, I'm hoping. Yeah. God bless. Thanks, Mo. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Joe. Oh, I see you've got this week's Kids Club by Post. Yeah, I have. So, what's this week's story? It's a story all about Dorcas. <gasps> Shall we ask her to read it to us? Sarah, will you read it to us? Of course I will. Are we ready? Please. In the seaside town of Joppa, Dorcas was always busy sewing coats to give to poor widows and children. She loved to take care of them the way Jesus had done showing God's love by being kind and helpful. When Dorcas got sick and died, her friends remembered how much she had helped others and had believed in God's son, Jesus. This Peter, a disciple and helper of Jesus, had healed a sick man in the next town and her friends went and asked Peter to come and quickly heal Dorcas. Peter went to Joppa and prayed for Dorcas, as Jesus had shown him. Father God, you alone have the power to bring Dorcas back to life. And as Peter prayed, Dorcas opened her eyes and sat up. Peter thanked God for answering his prayers. Everyone was happy to see Dorcas.
Dorcas alive and well, it was a miracle and many people began to follow Jesus and help the poor. Wow, Sarah, that was fantastic. So Dorcas was really, really kind and helped lots of people and she made clothes for them and then she died. Mm -hmm. But Peter came and he prayed and Dorcas came back to life. Yeah. That is a miracle. It really is. And it shows the power of prayer. Definitely. We don't actually have a Dorcas to make our clothes though, do we? No. I wonder where our clothes come from. Mm. Maybe we could check the tags in our clothes. That's a good idea. Let's have a look. Oh, oh, this was made in Budapest. Oh, mine was made in Pakistan. And um, should we check our tops? My top was made in India. And my top was made in Morocco. Mm. Do you know what I think? Have a, why don't you have a look at your clothes? Have a look at the labels inside and it should tell you where your clothes were made. And maybe, just as Peter prayed for Dorcas, we could pray for the people in those countries. That is a brilliant idea, Jo. Should we pray for people all over the world as well, Jo? Let's do that. Father God, thank you that there are people everywhere. Thank you that there are people in lots of different countries with lots of different cultures. We ask, Lord, that you keep them safe and you keep them healthy. And we ask these things in your son's wonderful name. Amen. Amen. So, don't forget, have a look at the labels in your clothes and spend some time praying for the people in those countries. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Jo. I think it's time to go now. Yeah. Bye. See you later. Bye. Lord, we know that nothing is impossible for you. We see it in the wonders and the miracles you do. So when we hold around by stuff, you'll teach us how to Trust in your great promises as we learn to say Nothing is impossible, nothing is impossible Healings, wonders, miracles Healings, wonders, miracles Nothing is impossible, nothing is impossible For you to do
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for our faith in Christ Jesus, and for the love of all your people, which come from a confident hope of what you have reserved for us in heaven. The same good news that came to the early church is the same good news that came to us all and is continuing to go out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed our lives from the day that we first heard and understood the truth about your wonderful grace. We ask that you give us complete knowledge of your will and to give us spiritual wisdom and understanding, enabling us to make the correct decisions. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to guide us, guide the way we live, always honouring and pleasing our Father. Let our lives produce every kind of good fruit for the glory of God. We ask to grow and learn greater knowledge of our Father and to work, walk in step with Christ. We also pray that you will strengthen us with all your power so we will have the endurance and patience we need in all circumstances. You have enabled us to share an inheritance that belongs to your people who live in the light. Help us to share that with joy. Thank you for rescuing us from the kingdom of darkness and transferring us into the kingdom of your dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. We ask for wisdom for governments across the globe as they react justly and truthfully to what's going on with the pandemic. We ask for clarity for our own government to make wise decisions in the coming months. Thank you, Father, for the growth of your church. For all our brothers and sisters, help us to love each other as you have loved us. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all the saints. The faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven and that you have already heard about in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. All over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all its truth. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. 
for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Good morning, Borida. If you've got a Bible near to you, uh, or if you've got the Bible on one of your gadgets, then you might like to turn with me to Colossians chapter 1 and verses 1 to 14. That's the portion of scripture that Elizabeth read just a few moments or so ago in our service. Got some exciting news for you. For the next nine or ten, maybe, Sunday mornings, we're going to be working through this epistle to the Colossians. And this morning, it's my task to be bringing something of an introduction to the series. And if time allows, we'll look at one or two verses specifically. Where was Colossae? What was Colossae? Well, Colossae was a city. It was situ situated 100 miles from Ephesus, modern-day Turkey. The area generally was a meeting point of trade routes, and therefore it was an important area. It was a thriving area, comings and goings of all kinds of people, far and wide. Now then, and listen carefully because this is important, because of its cosmopolitan nature and Colossae, as far as we are concerned, well, it was a breeding ground for all kinds of religious speculations, false teachings and heresies. Colossae was a smaller and poorer city than many of the other cities in the area. However, the church at Colossae was important enough to merit the attention of the Apostle Paul and, of course, God. God saw fit to include this letter in the Bible. Now, if God did that, then it's an indication to you and I this morning of how important it is that we should read this epistle, study it, and allow it as part of the Word of God to challenge our understanding, to edify us accordingly, and to make certain that we don't fall into any traps. We cannot be certain who planted this church. But by research into other epistles, we can put together a reasonable idea. The Apostle Paul never visited Colossae. However, we are told in the Acts of the Apostles uh, that the Apostle did spend three very fruitful years of ministry at Ephesus, not all that far away. And uh, his ministry was so effective that we are told in Acts 19 and verse 10 that all who dwelt in the province of Asia, and Colossae was in the province of Asia, heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. We can therefore assume that folk from Colossae, well, who visited maybe on business Ephesus, heard the gospel, were converted, and took the message of the gospel back to their hometown. They shared the gospel, they saw conversions, and at Colossae, a church was planted. Furthermore, we can identify two of the people who were members of the church at Colossae. Verse 6 and 7 tells us about somebody whose name was Epaphras and who shared the gospel with his friends. And the other guy is a guy by the name of Philemon and the epistle in the New Testament that bears his name tells us that the church met in his house in Colossae. Now why did the Apostle Paul write to the church in Colossae? Was there a problem? Was there a crisis? Yes, there was. What was it? It was that uh, the Eastern philosophies that were floating about in those days, Jewish legalism, Gnosticism, and all kinds of spiritual charlatans had been allowed to enter this church, to influence the church, and the result was that the gospel of Jesus Christ was being compromised. Here was a, a church that had taken their eyes away from Jesus. They'd compromised the reality of the salvation uh, that was and is only and totally and completely available through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in him alone. So that's the background. And that leads us into the epistle that Paul wrote to the Colossians. In the early verses, he reminds these Christians of what he had heard about them. And they were all good things. 
They'd heard the gospel. They'd believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. They'd been discipled. They'd been faithful to the Lord Jesus. He's heard, the Apostle Paul has heard of their love for all the saints. All good things. And so much so that in verse 3, well, the Apostle records these words. We always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you. Because we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints. Now, bearing in mind what I've said to you about these folk losing their way, it always it almost seems that the apostle is buttering them up, even approving of them. Listen, listen carefully. The apostle was an excellent strategist. You find that in several of his epistles. He makes his readers comfortable before he starts to put things right. Now, if he had pitched straight into this church at Colossae, the folk that made up that church at Colossae, they would have been far less likely to listen to him than when he was gracious enough to recognize their good points and to commend them accordingly. Now, that's good strategy. Now, having the Colossian Christians sitting comfortably, the Apostle Paul fires the first salvo of gospel truth that they need to be reminded concerning. And that's contained in verses 13 and 14. Paul says, For he, God, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. Now that is telling us quite clearly that Christians have experienced a change of location. We've been moved from one location to another location and it was God. It was God who moved us. In fact, he rescued us from one place and placed us where he wanted us. God has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, a place where we were in enormous danger and brought us to a place where we now know and rejoice in a total and absolute security. Now, maybe the Colossians had forgotten that which God had done for them. And you and I need always to remember that we are whom we are because of what God in his sovereignty, has done for each one of us. God has rescued us from where? From the dominion of darkness. Dear, oh dear, here I can hear you saying, that's a very dramatic phrase. You're quite right, it is, and it requires a closer examination. What does the word dominion mean? Well, if you look at your dictionary, it will tell you that dominion is a place which, whether it likes it or not, is subject to the rule of someone else. British dominions, for example, were countries which, although apparently free and independent, were nevertheless subject to the rule and the authority of the British government. The word dominion has the same root source as the word dominate. So God has rescued Christians from a place dominated by darkness. And darkness, as far as the Bible is concerned, is always definitive of what? It's definitive of sin and evil. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. The Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the devil is the prince of darkness. Christians have been rescued from the dominion of darkness, that phrase refers to the domination of sin. Now, those words that I've just spoken are startling words. They are serious words, but we have to face up to them as we consider the Lord Jesus Christ and as we consider the totally atoning nature of his death upon the cross for us, the redemption that Christian people know through their faith in him. Isn't it absolutely amazing, really, how uh, men and women will acknowledge that we live in an evil and a wicked world? 
psychologists, psychiatrists and the like uh, will uh, very often encourage that train of thought saying that people are the products of their environment, that people sin because of the environment, they would say, and of course, quite frankly, it suits people and believers to hear such teaching because it is a teaching which is a comfortable one. It's not our fault, they would say. It's our surroundings that's at fault. It's our surroundings that have caused us to be the way that we are and to live and do the things that we do. People don't like to hear the truth, which the Bible very clearly teaches. Men and women are sinners by nature and as a result of the fall. Listen to what our Lord Jesus Christ had to say on the subject. He speaks and he says, what comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts and sexual immorality, theft and murder, adultery, greed, malice and deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. All these evils come from inside and they make a man unclean. Where do those evils come from? They come from inside, and it is they that make a person unclean. What Jesus said, said there clearly destroys that whole argument of secular thinking that man's misbehavior comes from without. It comes from within. Sin, misbehavior, is the problem of the heart, my heart, your hearts, the hearts of these Christians at Colossae. This is the dominion of darkness. It's the state of a fallen humanity. It is a desperate situation and only God has the answer. And that answer is to be found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read verse 14 to you once again. The Lord Jesus in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. Hallelujah. Christians are rescued from the dominion of darkness by the Lord Jesus Christ. He is able to rescue us because of whom he is and because on the cross the Lord Jesus paid the penalty for the sins of the world. That's your sins, my sins, the sins of these Christians at Colossae. Through what Jesus did for us, there is to be found, listen to this, forgiveness of sins, a reconciliation to God. The sin problem is dealt with reconciliation and forgiveness. And on top of that, there is peace with God and the ability to know and to enjoy God and to know that total assurance as far as our eternity is concerned and a host of other benefits divine which are ours in Jesus. We are Christians through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Now the Colossians had lost sight of that fact, who he, the Lord Jesus, is. The fact that there is no other way to God. The Colossians had lost sight of that fact and uh, they had embraced false teachings and heresies and their theology had become a real mishmash. The Colossians at the risk of repeating myself, had lost their way. The epistle is there. The epistle is there to warn us of falling into the same trap. I've come to the end of my time uh, this morning. But let me just say that my prayer is, and I trust it's yours as well, may God grant that we never, never ever forget the majesty and the magnificence of he who is our saviour and never forget the extent and the reality of what it cost God to purchase our redemption. Never forget that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father but by him. This is the gospel upon which we stand, which we proclaim, and which we are rescued by. Never forget that God has brought us from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved Son, 
whose name is Jesus and in whom we rejoice. Do you remember those words of a hymn? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Why? Because all other ground is sinking sand. Thank you for listening to me. The Lord bless you. And I'll see you again soon, God willing. Bye now. Thank you, Hugh, for bringing us God's word to us this morning. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. When you've been a Christian for a few years, isn't it easy to forget sometimes that God's rescued us from that kingdom of darkness, but he's brought us into the kingdom of his son. A kingdom of light, a kingdom of love, a kingdom of joy and of peace. Don't we have so much to give thanks for this week? Let's go into this new week and remember what God has rescued us from and what he's, what he's brought us into and what we're going to. God's kingdom of eternal peace, joy, love and happiness. So this week it's half term, so the children's groups won't be on. Uh, they'll be back on the following week. Um, check with your house group leader if you have a house group on Tuesday. If you want to join a house group, um, please email the church or speak to one of us and we'll happily guide you to one. Thursday, I'd really encourage you to come and join our prayer meeting on Zoom from 8 until 9. We've had some great times praying for God's kingdom, praying for others, praying for people around the world. And it's really important that we do that. So I'd encourage you to, to come to that and join us as we pray God's kingdom to come here on earth. And then if you remember to book in, if you want your place in church next Sunday morning, make sure that you book in and send your email through to the church. Thank you. We're going to go to Hillsong now. That This week has been chosen by Geffen. So thank you, Geffen, for sending the song. If you've got a favourite and you've got a request, then please get in touch. We'll put it in the service. Great to digitally see you all and look forward to seeing you all soon. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
cross I see freedom When I see that grave I see Jesus And from death to life I will sing your praise In the one Come on you see When I see that cross I see freedom When I see that grave I see Jesus And from death to life I will sing your praise In the when I see that cross, I see freedom When I see that grave, I see Jesus And from death to life, I will sing you praise In the world, I wanna see that cross When I see that grave, I see Jesus And from death to life